Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are back in Sweden, as you might have been able to tell from the change in background. Looking a little bit fresh faced, but of course that will change over the next couple of weeks. But what won't change is reviewing some very nice beers, and we're going to go back to some very nice Swedish beers now. I've got some really interesting things, I think, to review for you over the coming videos, and I hope you enjoy them. For this one though, we are going to return to one of my favourite Swedish craft breweries. We're going up towards Gothenburg once again. Jutebori as you would say in Swedish and we're having a look at another beer from OO Brewing. So this one is the 100 Citra IPA which comes in at 6.5% ABV. The standard ABV for these kind of Swedish West Coast hazy IPAs and this one is as the name suggests a single hopped Citra beer. So OO Brewing of course are very well known because of their brewer being very good at the hazy New England IPAs. Um, this is the first one though that I've seen either from the 100 series or the 50-50 series being released in Sweden. So um, most of them are normally released through the lights of Glass Bank and I've seen them in Shiosk over in Copenhagen as well. Um, so hopefully this is the start of OO getting their beers into uh, Seistenborlag or this particular series of beers rather a little bit more regularly because I'd really love to try them um, a little bit more often actually because you know OO obviously a very good base recipe when it comes to the New England IPAs but really curious to see how this one turns out. It's been a good while actually since I've had a single hopped citra IPA. The last really good one I had that springs to mind was the Raw Power from Abletoff Gordbury, where I think that might have been an Imperial Hazy IPA though, so not quite sure about that, but hopefully this is another very good IPA from OO Brewing. These guys have got a reputation in this style, so I'm sure it will be a pretty nice beer actually. So I hope that you guys enjoy my take on it as well. So we'll just see how we get on. But anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that i've done from oo brewing before no doubt i will add some more at some point in the near future there's all the usual social media down there as well if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the swedish beers that i've reviewed for you that's been constantly added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about OO Brewing then. So as I've told you before, OO Brewing are based in Gothenburg in Sweden and they were founded back in 2011 by Olaf and Ole Andersson, who are childhood friends. And for many years, these guys were also avid home brewers. But the pair have always been very interested in beers, and Ole apparently has been heavily involved in the Gothenburg beer scene since pre-drinking age. And he was the brewer at Stigbjerg's Brewery as well, which is where a lot of the OO beers were made originally. While Ole is doing the brewing side of things, Olaf marries the, uh, manages the business side of things, and he also works in Copenhagen at a marketing agency. And apparently, they just kind of, they say that they just make beers that they enjoy drinking themselves and they're very into IPAs obviously but when I've tried other styles from them they've always turned out really nicely too. But this brewery for a long time um, kind of didn't kick on but in April of 2017 Ole left Stieg Beriot's brewery and fully kind of invested his time in OO and the company invested in a brewery in Hesingen near the Tingstead Bridge and this is equipped with a 2,000 litre brewing system which means they can brew up to 500,000 litres of beer per year. Over the course of 2019 2018 I think it was rather um, they brewed 100,000 litres of beer per year and they're gradually expanding that up to uh, the 500,000 mark so that they can reach capacity and that means their beers will become a little bit more readily available so like I say hopefully we can find more of their beers in Seistenbolaga over the next little while. Um, for a long time um, this 100 series and also the 5050 series, these were only available through the likes of Glass Bank and the online order services. I think they were exporting quite a bit of it as well and um, they were also sending some of them over to Denmark because in Denmark there is still a free market in alcohol. But um, these guys, probably the most well-known beer that you'll find from them is the, uh, the Narangi 
which is a lovely hazy IPA. The Muscles Double IPA is also very, very nice as well. They've just changed the artwork on that recently from what I've seen, so check those ones out if you get the chance. But they're also very good when it comes to dark beers as well. I'm sure I've had the Arctos Imperial Stout, and I've also had the Long Boil Barley Wine, both of which were very, very nice. But, you know, Ole Anderson, very, very well-respected brewer. If you get the chance to try some of his IPAs, I highly recommend that you do, but he's very good when it comes to other styles as well. So, um, yeah, that's all all you really need to know about OO Brewing for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see information on all the different beers that they've done. So, um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. I'll just let you have a little quick look at the artwork. You can see it is pretty much just blank there. You know, a lot of breweries these days are going for the minimalist thing when it comes to these tall boy 440 mil cans. There you can see OO Brewing on the back, that is their symbol, so if you ever see that you know you're in for a good beer. And they always do this thing too where they've got the the um, the name of the beer and stuff listed sideways. But yeah, 6.5% New England hazy Swedish West Coast IPA, however you want to, uh, to term it. But yeah, let's get this one out and we will get on with the taste and then I'm really curious to see how this one turns out. This beer incidentally was released on the 6th of December 2019 through the Tilfelig Sortiment, formerly Small Partiers in Sestenbolaget here in Sweden. And um, it's I've heard one or two interesting things about this beer so we'll see if any of those come out when we actually taste it. Um, but yeah, knowing Steve, knowing, I was going to say knowing Steve Bear, it's there, but knowing OO Brewing, I'm sure we are in for a good quality IPA. So um, yeah, as you can see with this one, and as you would kind of expect from, uh, from a hazy IPA, this has poured a lovely kind of bright, I would say this is more leaning towards the orangey end of the spectrum. It really is quite hazy and almost, it's not as soupy right enough as some of the ones that you're going to come across, but definitely has a lovely level of haze to it. If I stick my fingers behind the glass there, you can see how thick and hazy this beer is. There was a solid two-third finger of a frothy, I would say cream-coloured head on this one rather than perfect white. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, it looks pretty damn nice and uh, pretty much what you would expect from a sort of hazy New England um, Swedish West Coast IPA, however you want to term this beer. So um, yeah, let's have a look at the aroma then and see how we get on. But I will say, as soon as you open up the can of this one, you can get quite a little bit of uh, that juicy citra quality coming out. This beer is about, you know, six weeks old, so it's not at its freshest, we will say that, but this is one like I say that I really wanted to try and I'm sure it'll be alright. It's been in the fridge for six weeks, so it should be okay. Oh yeah, that smells nice. I mean, it's actually, it comes across in the aroma as being very, very well balanced. And I mean, obviously some of the hoppy notes might have dropped away um, over the last little bit, but it's still, um, it's maybe maybe not as pungent as it might have been, but it's still got everything you would expect from the Citra hop. Citra, as we know, one of the original big three, along with uh, Amarillo and uh, Simcoe. Those were the big three high alpha acid hops when I first started getting into craft beer. Um, you know, Citra is always known for its kind of mango-y quality. Sometimes it can give you a little bit of, of uh, a kind of grapefruity note, but often it gives you some lychee, gooseberry, sometimes some lemon-lime qualities as well. You can get a lot of different things out of Citra. It's actually a very, very good hop for um, single hop IPAs, if you like. There's a few others that are like that, but Simcoe, uh, but not Simcoe rather, I think uh, Citra is one of the ones that probably has the highest complexity. Um, but yeah, straight away with this one, you get those lovely mangoey notes. I want to say there's a little bit of a kind of stronger passion fruit in there, and maybe a little teeny bit of grapefruit. And that's really interesting how that goes together, to be honest with you. I really like that about this beer. Um, the dark, the kind of more pungent tropical fruits are quite pre are quite prevalent in this one, I would say. Um, but yeah, you get that juicier mango note that you expect. Um, there is a wee bit of a kind of limey quality to this one, I would say. Um, but you do get the juicy gooseberries and uh, and lychee notes that you can often get out of citra for me. But to me, the citra in this beer comes out a little bit more pungent and more tropical. Um, rather than being a bit lighter and juicy as you can get in some beer. So that's quite interesting. That will be to do with the, the yeast and the malt that they've used in here. Um, 
but yeah, I like that about it. As I say, it's a little bit more stronger and tropical, uh, more pungent and tropical, I should say, compared to some other um, Citra beers that I've had before. Like I say, the one, the one that really rings in my mind as being one of the best I had was the Raw Power from Abeltoft Gore Bravery over in uh, in Denmark. It's a beautiful beer, that. Um, so yeah, um, on the malty side of things then, I would say it's got a lovely kind of, you can pick out a little bit of the wheat pungency out of this one. The wheat is definitely a little bit stringent in this and you can feel it kind of coming out of the glass. Um, you've got some nice oaty creaminess in there as well. There's definitely a bit of a biscuity sweetness in there as well, but to me, the aroma that comes out of this, the, the malt base leans a little bit more towards the, the kind of wheaty side of things. It does have a nice level of pungency to it, which I um, really quite like. That's really interesting with this one. Um, yeah, beautiful smelling beer, I have to say. On the green side of the hops, you know, there is a bit of grassiness to this one, but I would say this one's got a good bit of a kind of big floral character to it. It's got a big kind of floral, almost spicy note to it. Um, and that's probably helping push out some of the more tropical fruits with this beer as well, actually. Um, you know, in terms of alpha acidity, I think the citra sits around 11, 12%, maybe even. I don't know if it's quite 13, I think it's in the 11, sort of 12% ca uh, category, so you're always going to get um, a good bit of floral quality out of uh, a citra, single hop citra beer. Um, but of course it's all about when in the boil they actually um, add these, and I'm sure this will have been, maybe it might have been dry hopped, and it might, you know, the hops will be added later on in the boil with this one. I don't know if they'll use a bit of citra as a bittering hop for this. I guess they would use a little bit, um, but yeah, it's it's a really, really nice smelling beer, this one. So take a bit of time and enjoy that aroma. Get a full appreciation for the Citra hop if you've never had one of these single hop Citra beers before, because they are pretty damn special. And to have one from a brewery like this, I think, hopefully, it turns out very, very nice. Um, so yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. This one is the 100 Citra IPA coming in is 6.5% ABV, a New England hazy Swedish West Coast style IPA from OO Brewing in Gothenburg on the west coast of Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slanger, Skrull, cheers. Yeah, that's pretty nice. It definitely has a little bit of pungency and bite to it, this one, but it smooths out really quite nicely, I have to say. I like that about this beer. Yeah, um, this is really solid. I mean, if you compare it to... Um, some of the other beers that OO have done, like for example the, the Mussels or the um, the Narangi, I'm trying to remember the name of the, the, the honey one that I had recently, the name of that's gone right out of my head because I've been reviewing the Japanese beers over the last little while. What I would say about this one is, this one isn't the most complex of IPAs that you're going to get from OO Brewing, but then again when it's a single hop it's not going to be. To get the, mo the highest level of complexity out of one of these beers you want at least two hops. Um, and you know, for example, Citra and uh, Nelson Sovin be a really good blend. I'm sure they actually did that. The reason that comes to mind is I think they did that in the 50 50 series, Citra Nelson. And they did, a, I can't remember what the other ones they did with Nelson was. I'm sure it was Nelson uh, Enigma or something, which would be a really interesting mix. Um, but yeah, this one, it, it's not the most complex uh, beer that you're, or complex IPA that you're going to get from this brewery. Um, but it's it's really well balanced. This is definitely one of the more kind of balanced beers, I would say, compared to, um, to some of the other ones. This one I don't find as in your face as some of the other ones um, that I've had from this brewery. But there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you want a beer that's just nice, straightforward and drinkable. And you know, this one delivers on that. There's nothing wrong with that. So yeah, and I mean, these are, it's a good educational series as well, if they're going to do this, it's good to, to, for teaching you about the different um, styles of hops and what kind of flavours you get, you know, you've got so many hops these days, I'd be interested to see them do a Sabro one, Sabro's a really new, interesting kind of orangey hop 
uh, out in the States and I've never had it as a, in a single hopped IPA. That would be a really interesting one. So if they're watching from OO, Sabro would be a good interesting next one. Enigma is a, another very interesting hop from Australia. Or even Styrian Wolf, if you can get a hold of it. Or Styrian Dragon, you know, there's some very interesting hops in Slovenia these days. So, you know, single hop IPAs have got a really good educational purpose, if you like. Or, you know, my type of education is a bit different, of course. But, um, you know, I like this one. I mean, it's, it's as I say, a little bit more straightforward than what you might normally get from OO, but I think it's it's quite a solid beer. So let's try and break the flavour of this down a little bit then. So, middle of your palate, you get that nice kind of wheaty, white bready malt base there. That blankets the middle of your tongue. It's not quite as pungent and kind of... Um, punchy if, uh, if you like as I thought it was going to be from the aroma. The aroma gave the impression that the wheat was going to be a little bit bitey but really this beer smooths out the middle of your palate quite nicely. If you go to the very centre of your tongue you definitely get more of the kind of oaty, creamy sort of notes out of this beer. There's a little bit of a kind of sweet kind of caramelly quality to this one too. Um, it's Is it more caramelly or is it more biscuity? Difficult to pinpoint. Yeah, and um, it's got a little. It has a little bit of that kind of McVitie's digestive, oily, biscuity sweetness to it, which is nice, and that's covering up the boozy aspects of the beer, of course. So you do get a little bit of that kind of standard, um, sort of West Coast, um, Swedish West Coast hazy New Englandy type IP. It's definitely a standard kind of malt based this one. The further you go into the aftertaste you will feel the wheat coming out a little bit more but earlier on I think it's a little bit more creamy so it leans a little bit towards my, more like Trillium um, later on in the aftertaste but in the beginning it's a little bit more smooth like Treehouse for example but on the hoppy side of things then back corners of the palate there is a teeny little bit of earthiness there. You don't often get that with Citra but it might just be that I'm not drinking this one straight away fresh and um, but as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue you get that lovely kind of big floral aromaticity out of this beer round the front curve of the palate it smooths out a little bit and becomes a little bit more kind of grassy and uh, just lighter you've got a little bit of almost zestiness on the front of your palate too which is quite nice And yeah, behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And for me, this one, it's you know, it's straight away citra, but some of the more tropical notes do come out a little bit more pungent in this one, which is nice. Um, so if you go to the back, towards the back of that oily part, definitely a little bit of that darker grapefruit there, but it very quickly evolves to be a little bit more kind of passion fruity. And um, further forward from that, you start to get the, ju the, the kind of smoother, lighter mangoey notes and there is maybe a little bit of a kind of like papaya um i would say like a little bit of a papaya kind of apricotty note i do get a little bit of that towards the front of the palate but on the very edge of the tongue it's almost just a little bit limey definitely some lemon limey notes i don't get so much in the way of like gooseberries and lychees is quite often you can get with this one there's a teeny bit of it but to me and um, towards the front of the palate it's a little bit more kind of lemon limey, as I say, a little bit of a, a kind of apricotty papaya type note behind that, then the smooth mangoes and then you've got that darker kind of passion fruity quality as well, which is uh, which is really nice. I, really, I like how this beer goes together, it's definitely a more kind of bitey IPA rather than being a little bit more of a kind of smooth and kind of creamy one, so I like that. I've been getting more into the kind of bitey ones in recent times. Um, and this one kind of delivers for what I wanted at, the, at this specific moment in time. But, you know, palates change with different beers. Your palate's always changing with all these new things that breweries are giving you. Um, but, yeah, I like how this one goes together. It's a nice, quite easy drinking, New England hazy Swedish West Coast IP. I've said that a few times now, but it's um, it's good. It's not the most complex beer you're going to find from OO, but I think it's, it's pretty solid. I'm surprised at how kind of pungent. The darker side of the tropical fruit is in this one, but as I say, maybe when it was fresher, it might have come out a little bit more um, kind of smooth and mangoey rather than having a bit more passion fruity sort of presence to it. But nothing wrong with that. It's still in really good condition, I think. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel, I think it's mid-bodied, this one. Yeah, mid-bodied. 
carbonation is um, really quite nice and smooth with this beer, which is you know what you'd expect. And I'd say overall the mouthfeel. I think yeah, I'm going to go with smooth this one. It's not the creamiest of uh, hazy IPAs that you're going to come across, but it's got a nice level of smoothness to it. And um, in the centre of your palate, you've got as I say a lovely smoothness, little touch of sweetness there in the very centre of your tongue. Decent level of hoppy bitterness, maybe about you know 40 IBUs, maybe. Yeah, I think maybe 35 or 40 IBUs with this one, and you've got some nice juicy, you know, fruity qualities to this beer as well. Maybe not quite as juicy as it might have been um, straight up fresh when it was when it came out about six weeks ago, but I think it's still in really um, nice condition and uh, maybe a little touch oily as well on the front of the palate. But overall, a really solid IPA. This one, like I say, not the most complex you're going to find from all, but definitely nice if you want to learn a little bit about the Citra Hop and I do hope that we see more in this 100 series in, uh, in say Stemble Lago over the next little while. I'd love to see Sabro, maybe Styrian Wolf or Styrian Dragon, Enigma would be very interesting as well and of course you can never go wrong with a Nelson Sovian um, single hop beer. Um, you know, some of the other New Zealand ones, it might be cool because not there's not too many breweries, there are a few Kiwi owned breweries like String, uh, Strengness and uh, MKB in uh, Sweden that used the kiwi hops, but it'd be cool to see a few more of them in uh, OO Brewing's beers as well. So um, yeah, I look forward to seeing more from this series. It's good for educational purposes and it gives you a really nice kind of straight up drinkable IP. I do want to try a few from the 50-50 at some point as well because that could be really interesting also, but not seeing those released through System Balagi yet. We'll need to wait for those. But yeah, another very solid beer from OO Brewing this one and a nice return to reviewing Swedish beers for you. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed my take on this one. So let's leave it at that. This one was the 100 Citra IPA coming in at 6.5% from OO Brewing in Hesingen in Gothenburg. Thank you again for watching my beer reviews. As always, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from OO Brewing as well and I will return to these guys at some point fairly soon. And do let me know some other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. Until the next time, slide just now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys very soon. This one was the 100 Citra IPA at 6.5% from OO Brewing in Gothenburg here in Sweden. Slange, Skull, Campana.